Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm channel. Once again, we're at the Rising Kale Farms. Uh, Robert's getting his stuff. We're going to get some of this beekeeping stuff ready to go. He's going to get into his hives for his first ever hive inspection. It's five days after the nukes were in five days after the nukes were installed, so we're excited to get in and see how the bees look. The path back to the, the bee yard, the Rising Kale Farms bee yard. Have you named your bee yard yet? I have not. Any suggestions? Uh, not right now. You caught me okay. off guard there. <laughs> uh, but you are going to name the hives, or at least number the hives, and, yes. and naming the yard would be cool unless it's just Rising Kale I think we farms. should name the hives since there are three, the initials of the farm, RKF. R K and F. Hives R K and F. That's a good idea. Rising Kale Farms. Yeah. So the pathway back here to the bee yard is beautiful. It's got a nice trail cut out. And riding on the golf cart really makes me want to fix my golf cart. Missing branches. Some branches now. And there's activity because when I came back here the other day with Austin, there was activity all in the front of them. Nice. Well, it looks that's good from I, here. That's all I wanted to see was that they're all happy in their space. Probably safe to get those boxes out of there, or should we just leave them? Yeah, I think we can get the uh, plastic boxes off the ground. They're not interested in it anymore. I do see that the sugar water has attracted ants. Yes. And beetles on the ground. Do you see them? No, those are bees. Sorry. I thought that was a beetle. The beetle, the hive beetles are so small, you probably won't see them. And they're black, aren't they? They're black or dark brown, yes. Well, you said you saw the queen in the first one. I did. When I was editing the video, uh, she was on the last frame that you installed in this hive here. And we saw it together in the third one. Yeah, so the middle one is the only one that we didn't see. Right. So are you going RKF yeah. or the other way around? Um, I think it should be... Um, R see. for orange. Orange. R orange. <laughs> um, how about... It doesn't matter. How about if I, while facing them? RKF. Right, so left to right, facing the entrances. Yeah. I like it. Robert's got his brand new vintage jacket. It is looking good and forest and beekeeping supply. We'll nice. give them a little thumbs up on the fit of their jacket. It's extra, extra large, which means I can grow into it. <laughs> a growing boy. The, the, jack, the vintage jackets like the one I'm wearing and he's wearing are really nice down here in the south where it's hot and it's humid. Uh, when you're out here for a couple hours working and you don't have the option to just run back to the house, you don't want to be trapped up in a full canvas suit. So these are really super valuable. And see, this is what happens when you just become aggressive with your gloves. <laughs> so I have extras. Do you? With yes. you? Yeah. Okay. Our goal today is not to do a whole lot of messing around in the hives, but we are going to open them up, let Robert see what they look like after five days. Uh, he has a lot of uh, learning to do. He has to get familiar with the hives and the bees. So we're just going to get in. I'm going to try to explain a few things or just let him observe and let the bees teach him because honestly I think that's probably one of the best ways to learn is just get in there and let the bees teach you. Of course, learning from someone, a mentor or online is very good too, but you have to learn how to observe and understand what the bees are telling you. I know it would be heavier, but is it because we filled the the sugar thing, the feeder, once we put it in. Do you ever fill them and then put it in? Sure, either way. Okay, it's just a matter of weight, right? Yep. Okay. Let's take our feeder, I think. I'm gonna try it this way, that's why it's one less thing we have to take with us. I like this, this is a nice solid one. I'm gonna yeah, stop by. Yeah, the wooden by. tops are, are way easier to handle. The others are just too floppy. One part sugar to one part water. Ready to go. It's about three quarters of the way full. What we're going to do, I think that's going to be fine. Yeah, again, in this region, this time of year, the sugar water is not critical, uh, but for a new colony, it can help them just build their comb faster. Right now, we have so many wildflowers that are blooming and providing nectar that it's not absolutely necessary to have the sugar water. 
probably put my bale on. Yeah, probably a good idea. So we have the, the one community feeder out here that didn't fit the entrance last time. It's covered with ants. Covered with ants. Okay. So Robert, you're naming the hives. RKF Horizon RKF. Kel Farms. R is the yellow, K is the green, and F is the orange. Nice. Hive R, Hive K, and Hive F. F. So um, we just need to get bricks or something and paint the letters on them. Yeah. So walk me through. I'm going to put down my smoker, lift up the lid, do a little smoke, take out the empty frame, replace it with the sugar frame, just check things out. Is it okay if I lift up one of the frames and just inspect what's going on? Absolutely. In fact, you should. You want to start seeing what that looks like. Okay. So Maybe. as far as smoke goes, and a few things, typically you don't want to work in front of the hives. The bees don't like it when you're standing in front. So I'm going to swing wide when I go in front of the hives. And when you smoke them, you puff a little bit in the entrance, puff a little bit under the hood, and then you get into it. So do some smoke now. Lift up the lid and just puff a little bit mm -hmm. and then take it off? A few puffs in front. Okay. And then you lift the lid, puff a little bit underneath. Some people actually puff and then lower the lid. And then wait 30 seconds or so and take the lid off. Bring your hive tool? In my pocket. Okay. But because these were freshly painted, mm -hmm. I might need to use it just to get this off. Uh, paint, yes, and then also later on the propolis. It's a gooey, sticky substance the bees will pack in there. Okay. And they'll glue that lid on for you. Sorry, ladies, for the noise. They are not bothered. Wow, look at them go. That's crazy. Hello, girls. So for the feeder, you're going to remove two. Should I do a little smoke or not? Uh, I, you could, but they are totally not bothered right now. I don't think I would, okay. really. If they start acting agitated. Of course, there's always different opinions on when and how to smoke. But... Uh, if my bees were acting like this, I would probably be tempted to just, just not. just having a little moment for themselves inside. It doesn't seem as though they're nervous at all. Good. So that one's mostly empty, right? No mm -hmm. significant comb. And should I just set it to the side or shake it down on? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want, you can shake them in there and then set it to the side. There you go. Nice shake. Okay, girls, not going to do anything. We're not hurting you. So come near my finger. It has no love on it. Just put it in your head right now that if you get yep. stung, you're not reacting. Nope, no reaction. I had good practice yesterday with the wasp. Now we're going to put the honey back in. I'm watching the ground because we've obviously in our shake have knocked off a few of the bees. I don't want to step on them. We're going to go back in with our feeder. Perfect. Okay. Good. Now if you wanted to lift up some frames just to look at them to see how they're doing like in this case I might uh, pull out the ones that are closest to the established frames just to see how much comb they're building okay just keep in mind pulling it out even so that you're not pinching the sides nice. well, looks like they are putting some wax on but um, oh, that side! Look at that! Dang, beautiful! That was completely empty five days ago, and they've already. Oh, packed. look! 
So what is this in the, the glistening stuff in here? Okay, so there's uh, nectar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, there's nectar. Uh, they could be turning that into honey already, but this stuff that looks like Sorry. you know yellowish cake. Right. Like this on this side, that strip down the middle. That's wax. Okay. They're building wax. So for those of us who are very new at this, mm -hmm. I mean, that's five days. What is the process? Walk me through a bee leaves the hive. Are these the drones, the workers? Who are they? There are three types of bees, right? Or three categories of bees. So of course you have a queen bee. Right. And uh, some would argue that there could be multiple queens. Okay. Most people agree that there's one. Um, I'm not gonna argue that because I don't really know. But the queen bee is like the super bee. She has the longest life. She can live five years or so. Typically they'll breed, uh, they'll lay eggs for two, three, four, five years. So then you have also worker bees and nurse bees. The worker bees are the ones that fly out, forage, bring back resources. Nurse bees are the ones that hang out and take care of the, the nest, the home. And then the, the drones are the big ugly bees that are male. They're the only male bees in the hive. And they're gonna fly out. Their primary purpose is to fly out, be available for virgin queens, and um, on the, the lucky day that they get to mate, they also die. Okay. So, so the male dies when it mates with the queen. Correct. So when I bought these bees from um, David Holman, bee guy, yep. out in Seguin, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, and the, the hive that I bought, those boxes that had the five frames in them, Yes. what is the percentage of male to female in that hive? Is there any way of determining that? Uh, probably someone a lot smarter than me has done that math, but I, I just know that the percentage of males is very small. Okay, so the primary, or the, the, the chances that ma the majority of the bees in this hive are female is great. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. When the queen is born, I know we talked about, and I don't want to get ahead, but we talked the other day about the queen. If this queen is kicked out, or they kill her, or she just, it's, she's too old and she's not doing anything, doesn't have enough power to lead. Right. They can appoint a new queen from the eggs that are hatching. Right. So a queen is, I, I say the queen is built. I don't know if that's the proper term, but if the hive determines that they either don't have a queen or their queen is aging and becoming uh, not viable any longer, they will start building a cell or multiple queen cells around eggs that exist. Okay. Especially if she's not laying eggs anymore, they will use eggs that exist. And the uh, it takes 16 days, I might have the numbers wrong, forgive me, but I believe it's 16 days from egg to uh, a queen emerging. Okay. So that queen bee, and the way they do that is they build this larger cell around the queen. They feed her a whole lot of um, royal jelly. Mm -hmm. All bees get some royal jelly. Queens get lots of royal jelly. It's a substance they create, okay. and it's what creates the super bee, the queen okay. bee. And so she grows up. She spends a few days as an egg, a larva, and then a pupa. She pupates, comes out, emerges into the hive. Uh, she, her first task is to see if there's any other emerging queens because they're going to fight, and um, the strongest queen will survive. And then she'll, within a few days of emerging from the cells, fly out, find the drones, mate with 10 or 15 drones. Each of them will die. She'll bring all that genetic material back into the hive and immediately, um, well, maybe not immediately, but very soon uh, start laying eggs and she'll do that for the next two, three, four, five years. So this very well may be a silly question um, considering my somewhat knowledge of biology, but w is she the only one that lays eggs? It's possible for a worker to lay an egg, but it will be sterile. Okay. Workers don't make Just it. like with my ducks and my chickens, I don't Correct. need to have a male for the female to lay an egg. It's part of the ovulation system. Correct. But in order for it to be fertile. Now, in most cases, workers won't lay eggs, but in some cases when the like there's an instinct to make sure there's eggs in the hive, so if the queen dies or doesn't have the proper strength, pheromones, whatever, uh, the, it's possible for a worker to say, 
okay, I got to take care of business. I'm going to start laying eggs. Gotcha. Okay. But uh, they don't normally. It's not like ducks and chickens that have to lay eggs because okay. that's just. It's their choice. It's, yeah. Uh, bees okay. will make that choice based okay. on the needs of the hive. Okay. So then we have the three types of bees and the queen. They're all having their little life here, building this colony. Yep. The worker bees go out. They find the food source, the flowers. They collect the pollen. Yep. Then what? Uh, pollen and nectar and propolis are three resources and water, four resources that are brought into the hive. Okay. Uh, pollen and nectar and enzymes that come from the bees are mixed to create... Um, see, did you see that? They're fighting. Uh, huh? uh, one of those... Oh no, they're, bring, they're not fighting actually, they're bringing out a dead bee. Isn't that crazy? We're dragging it. Yeah, look. Possibly, yeah, yeah it looks one. like they're carrying out a dead bee. So mm -hmm. the, the pollen and nectar and enzymes are mixed up into what they call bee bread. Okay. If you look in your frames, packed in the bottom of some, you'll see a yellow or orangey, sometimes red, sometimes a whitish. I call it uh, bee cake, okay. but it's really bee bread. And it's packed into the bottom of those cells. That's their primary food source. Okay. Honey is not a bee's primary food source. So the, the process is they bring that those four components back. Yep. Um, the nectar, the propolis, the water, and what was the other one that you said? The pollen. pollen. And they know where to position it. Yep. Or to put it, basically. Right. And then that happens until all these frames are full. Is that correct? They're going to form... So the way that... Sorry, I have it's, to move around. My, no, it's okay. This mat is hot on the your knees. The mat is hot on the is knees, your knees right? on fire? Yeah. A little bit. It's a little older than you are, so my <laughs> knees are... Um, well, we don't have to squat. We can stand okay. up. Oh, We better much just stay down here because you don't want to have me try to get up on camera. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave the camera running when you get up. No, well, I'll just away. roll over. <laughs> <laughs> so, the what was I answering? Um, you were talking about the four components. Uh, what is the process? They bring it back. All the, They're positioned those. The frames are full of the stuff. Oh, right. So, the how is the hive organized? The, the brood nest or the nest, the baby bee nest is uh, in the shape of a ball, it's okay. a sphere, and that ball typically they like to maintain around the size of a basketball. Okay. So if you can imagine right in the center of this hive, okay. the size of a ball, a basketball, a soccer ball, something like that, um, then on the outsides of that they're going to be packing the resources, the pollen, the bee bread, the, the nectar. Uh, if you see outside of that um, just just a shiny watery inside that's usually nectar okay and then of course the pollens and the uh, that's been converted to bee bread is packed around that as well so you'll see a circular pattern uh, you might even see it here if we want to pull one up and take a look do you want to do that um, we could okay look the other way everyone okay all right let's just pull let's get this one out of the way so it gives us a little more room Typically, when I get into where there's a lot of activity, I'll pull one from the outside. Take a look, just to make sure the queen's not on it. And then I'll just set it to the side. Set it down like this. And then we can scoot them over. Pull this one over, and then we'll get into this first one that's got lots of stuff on it. And then when we pull it up, we're going to try not to bump those edges. Okay. Now this one, and I'm just getting a better grip on it, uh, you can sort of see a circular or roundish pattern. Of course, nothing's perfect. And this is a brood nest. I see what you're saying. Okay. And then there's honey. This is honey. Okay. Um, all of this outside. Some of this might be just nectar, but it's nectar being converted to honey. The capped stuff on the outside is honey that's done. Okay. And then, so you can see down in here, that's the bee bread, or what I right. call bee cake. Uh -huh. And that's going to be their food source. This is a very full frame. Is that Yeah, there's larva there. You can see the white worms 
That's the bee larva. Okay. Let me see what else we have here. And I don't see any eggs on this one. Looks like this one's full of larva. I'm just gonna turn it over. You should have a similar pattern on this side. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how they instinctively know to do that. Yes. And I don't see the queen. This is a very full. This one's full of larva, and this has got everything except eggs because it looks too full for eggs, actually. But that's the pattern. You'll notice that circle pattern in a, in a fully established hive will be bigger in the middle, and it tapers off as the spear rounds off to the edges. Okay. So we can put this one back in. And you want to try to put them back in exactly the same position and direction that it came out. Sometimes my brain doesn't work and I, I turn one around, but let's look at one more. They're being very good. And notice I'm using the uh, leverage mm -hmm. of the tool. Am I still running? Yes just to pull it away, break the propolis and wax, okay. and then I can get my fingers in here and pull straight up. And be careful not to drop. And I'm just rocking it to get a better grip. I don't see a queen yet. No. We know she's in here because you saw it on video. Yes. So the yellow on the the bees is the pollen, correct? Correct. What they're packing on their legs. Right. They actually pack it on their entire body, but they bring it in on their legs. So this one's very full as well. This is a very good looking um, brood nest so far. And the maturing larva on the outside. Everything in the middle, that's capped larva. So when it, actually it's Okay, I might not completely understand the, the biology of this, but the larva, I think, is the stage before it's capped, and then it turns into a pupa, and that's when the pupa... Okay, no, I do understand. Let me say this as right as I can. Somebody's going to correct me, I know, but... So the larva spins a cocoon inside the cell and pupates like a butterfly. Okay. The, the worker bees cap it off, and then when it... Uh, comes out of its cocoon, then it also will break the seal of that cap and uh, emerge. Emerges a baby bee. Emerges a baby bee, exactly. So, did you want to pull one and take a look? Sure. Man, I'm sweat, sweating like a pig. I know, it's a little warm out here. It's very humid. Let's move these very carefully. Move it, ladies. But I don't want anybody to get crushed. But inevitably, it'll happen, right? It will. You do try to minimize it, but... And how much you minimize might depend on how hot and tired you are. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now, always keep in mind that as you're lifting one mm -hmm. corner, that bottom corner is pinching against the wall. Gotcha. Okay, so now I want to come back in here with this so I don't drop it. And then work over here. Okay, here we go. Now, nice and even, straight up. Yeah, I gotta get my fingers on there though. And that's where I don't have any glove on, so. You're okay. You're beautiful. Now hold it over the hive just in case that, that queen's on there and she falls off. I do not see her here. Seem to be so here. there's some white pollen, some mm -hmm. yellow pollen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Okay. 
So, so your hive's in good shape. Now right. before I button a hive up, I make sure that I'm pushing them. You can push slowly and they'll get out of the way. But you want that to be close together because otherwise they could be building a lot of wild comb between them. Okay. And once they start building wild comb, there's no stopping it. It's a mess. All right. One of the reasons I was sort of hesitant to agree to eight frames in the hive earlier on because these are designed for proper spacing and when you start taking frames out it opens the door for improper spacing which could create a problem so we're going to give ourselves room for that one we took out i'm just going slowly so they'll get out of the way and we took it out of the first position right yes Okay, you can drop that one back in. Okay, beautiful. Now with this feeder, this is a, I think this one's a little wider than your others. Okay. You only have room for eight frames, but I think you fit nine in one of these others, didn't you? I, I honestly, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't I think we, I think we took two out of each one. Yeah, we did, because we had one and two, and then the five, so we only had eight in each one. Okay. So my question was the other day, what this notch was, is it important for it to be up or down so that the bees can come and go? And this is a vent hole. So if you can imagine in the summertime when it's hot and the, the heat from the hive is coming up through here and it's in this space kind of like an attic in a house right. uh -huh. and you have this is like an attic vent. Gotcha. So it's going to be venting out the... Uh, so it should be up. It should be up when it's hot out. Okay. Down when it's cold. Okay. Because then what happens because the they... The heat stays there. Well, the heat stays in a little better but also... The bees are maintaining the inside of the hive at 93, 95 degrees. Okay. So based on temperature outside, there could be a lot of condensation. And with the vent down, it helps remove condensation from the hive. Gotcha. So up in the summer, down in the winter. Okay. Let's get her back on then. So up in the summer. And then uh, if, if they're not moving, you can just puff the edges with smoke okay. and get them off the edge. And that way you're not smooshing them. Two frames removed. Right, so those are going to go back into your storage, a place where they cannot be attacked by wax moth. Okay. Right now it's not that big a deal because there's no significant wax on it, but if there were, you would want to put them in a refrigerator, a freezer, or a sealed box. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Blake, for stopping by and helping me understand the, uh, the life cycle of the bee and helping me get that feeder in there. Robert, thank you for trusting me as a mentor. I know there's a lot I have to learn, but it's just really cool that you're trusting me to be able to come over and share whatever knowledge I do have with you. Absolutely. I'm uh, very grateful for you, your friendship, and all of your knowledge. It's only three hives, but I feel like we're starting out something that's going to really change the face of what we're doing here at the farm. And, um, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Very I'm excited, too, it. and I believe, based on the responses to the first video, I have followers that are now excited in the Rising Kill Farms. Good be adventures you guys follow along you're going to see robert uh, progress through this first season i can't promise to follow forever but we're going to get a good start and then as you guys are curious and interested you can post on my other beekeeping videos just ask how robert's doing or follow him over on his youtube channel instagram facebook where are you all um, just my website www.raisingkalefarms.com risingkalefarms.com that's the best place to know or instagram or Instagram, but you link to Instagram from the site, right? Um, I believe it is linked. So check him out, follow along. Uh, you can also inquire through the Daddy Curbs Farm because uh, we do hang out every once in a while and I'm very interested in what he does through the farmer's market and now excited for his beekeeping journey. Thanks for being here. Before we go, we do believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. So thank you so much for being a part of our story through this video and letting us be a part of yours. We'll talk to you soon.